Hello again. Are you ready for a 2 million gigabyte game size? I'm going to be real soon. Hello again, I am Blunty. This little guy is the gaming rig I use for running PC games while Twitch streaming, so my main rig can just concentrate on everything else to do with streaming. And in fact, I built this very rig on a live stream almost exactly two years ago now. And in today's video, we'll be slapping in a small but vital upgrade while we chat about the monstrous hunger that Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 has for your precious, precious hard drive space and the super clever ways it's handling it. And it's yes, legitimately 2 million gigabytes worth of game data. And while you're trying to put that amount of data into some sort of context, and while I beg for your algorithm fighting interactions of subs, thumbs, bells and comments, I have a specific comment question for you today. What is your next hardware upgrade? Either planned or just desired? What gear lust are you feeling right now? What gear need are you feeling right now? And if you've never tried a flight sim, by the way, this might be a fun way in as it's included in Xbox Game Pass. So you can try it at no extra cost if you're subscribed to that service already. It's going to be fascinating to see how popular this title is compared to its forebears given this super low friction entry point for trying it out and what is otherwise not a cheap title. And if you're looking for a comparatively cheap way into deeper immersion for flight simming, check out my review of the budget-friendly Thrustmaster HOTAS 4. So, this rig originally housed an AMD 5 2600, a GTX 1080, 8 gigabytes worth of HyperX Predator RAM, a couple of SSDs, a 1 terabyte one for game installs, and a 500 gigabyte one for the system and other software. All housed in what is one of my very favorite mini ITX cases out there for style, unusually good cable management, for an ITX case at least, and a decent build experience, the Inwin A1. And a couple of weeks back, I swapped out the AMD Ryzen 5 2600 CPU for the absolute beastly Ryzen 9 3900X, the one I got for the original review and has since spent some time in Linux machines as I tested gaming life for a Linux user. But now its 12 core 24 thread heartbeat feeds the games all of its tasty CPU cycles on this rig. At the same time, I also slapped in a Radeon 7 GPU as the RTX 2060, which was most recently in here, had to go to the main rig. Link to a video in the down below for that story if you don't happen to be a regular around here. But as you'd imagine, and as I'm expecting, a Radiant 7 paired with a Ryzen 9 3900X is pretty beastly for gaming and should be plenty of horsepower for the stunningly glorious looking Flight Sim 2020. Flight Sim 2020's system requirements aren't actually all that thirsty by today's standards, and thanks to the complicated physics simulations of aerodynamics and weather and such and so on, and the extraordinarily long draw distances compared to normal games, even open world ones, do mean flight sims in general, and in particular this new beastie flight sim, can and will chew up as much CPU and GPU power as you can possibly give it. But more than that, because of the unique way Flight Simulator 2020 will use live streamed data to provide remarkable looking simulations of, well, <laughs> the, literally the entire planet Earth, including real time weather simulations, including handcrafted locations, handcrafted airports, all mixed in with machine learning driven AI extrapolated 3D terrain, buildings, environments, the Earth. Thanks to all that, it is unusually thirsty for drive space. And that is why today's upgrade is two terabytes of extra SSD storage. For this long needed storage upgrade, I've chosen an old trusty favorite, the WD Blue SSD. I've used plenty of these and plenty of builds. None of them have let me down and I do quite like WD, but if you prefer Seagate, go for Seagate. It's fine, this one was already undone. I got my knife, I forgot, already sliced it in preparation for making this video to make my life easier so I don't have to fiddle with packaging. Eyeball on screen, derp -a derp -a derp. There we go. Tidy little bugger. I love it. And I put that on my pants. Zerp. All right, let's bring in the old streamer PC. I'll pop off that window so we can protect that glass. I'm going to need to go into the other side. Uh, and if I remember correctly, I have already wired up the appropriate cable from the SATA port on the motherboard because obviously this teeny tiny case makes it a bit hard to do that sort of stuff afterwards you gotta you gotta plan ahead when you build this stuff which is why i think and i hope i planned ahead and put an extra side to cable running to the empty drive bay at the back so let's just pull out the side panel here i'm just gonna say again i really like this in-wind case this is one of my favorite itx cases i've 
ever built in. And yes, it does look like I've been smart enough to run myself a SATA cable already. Power might be an issue. Nope, we got power up here. Easy peasy. So yeah, as you can see, I've already got a WD blue drive in there, a little one terabyte one. That's uh, the standard storage drive there. So let's pop this guy out. And oh, look, there's the M.2 hiding under there. So while I go ahead and do this sort of rather boring install procedure, I'm going to switch to voiceover mode so I can talk about exactly what I plan to do with all this new space and why it's important for Flight Sim 2020. I've just realized, by the way, that also is a WD Blue M.2 drive. I've got all WD in this. Usually I like to mix it up just so I don't seem like I have any favoritism. But this might as well have been a WD sponsored build. WD, WD, WD. Damn it. I should have approached the WD people. Hey, WD people, after the fact. Can you give me any money and pretend this was a sponsored ship? Or... Oh, Christ, I've screwed up. Bad influencer. Bad. <laughs> Let's get to it. And all two terabytes will be dedicated to Flight Simulator 2020. See, the developers for this simulated surface of the entire planet of Earth have generated more than two petabytes of data for it. That is over two million gigabytes, which is a bit too big for even a Deep Pockets enthusiast level rig, but I'd bet, you know, the gimmicky stunt YouTube channels like Linus Tech Tips are working on a video about building some kind of idiotically impractical rig which could house all two petabytes simultaneously. In fact, I'd probably lay money on them doing that. Meanwhile, everyone else who lives in the real world will have the help of some very clever data management tools built into Flight Sim 2020. Flight Sim 2020 will stream live data as it needs it, but if you're already panicking about it swallowing up your entire bandwidth so nothing else works on your Wi-Fi while you fly, or you're on a data cap, don't panic. Like I said, the devs have been very aware of things and have done some very clever things. You can, of course, completely turn off the online functionality, which will mean your visual experience is less sophisticated and less accurate, but you won't be eating data. And the important things about a flight sim, that is the physics of the flight sim, all still work perfectly fine. You can even select which parts of the live data you want or don't want to help moderate a limited data speed or amount. You can set limits on how much bandwidth it uses by capping its speed and slash or capping how much data it will use per month so you can keep under a cap and make sure everything else on your internet connection has room to breathe while you are simming. You can even have it warn you when you've used a certain amount of data so you can start turning off things if you want. And beyond that, if you fly to certain locations repeatedly, you can have it cache data locally. And even that you have complete control over, telling it exactly where to store this cache data and how much of it to store, and even a single button you can easily hit to clear it all out if you need that space back in a hurry. And that's the crux of the plan for this two terabyte drive. I'll be partitioning it into two drive letters. One will be 1.5 terabytes in size, which I'll use exclusively for the data cache. So I have huge amounts of data all stored up, which is probably massive overkill, but I can, so I am, at least in the beginning. The remainder of the drive, 315 gigabytes also. And if you think that math sounds wrong, well, it is, but it also isn't helpful link in the down below for non-nerds to figure out what the hell's going on there. But that will be used for the game install itself. And by the way, the install of the base game itself of Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 will take up to 130 gigabytes, which is like twice the size of your average AAA title these days already. I mean, some do reach into the triple digits, but you know, most are around sort of 60 to 70 ish these days. But that is 130 gigabytes I didn't have on this machine. I already very much needed an upgrade to drive space in this machine. I've been playing musical chairs and uninstalling and reinstalling games recently as I run out of space quite desperately. So the extra 200 odd gigabyte I get free for other game installs is quite handy here too. It's going to be very interesting to see what this title will do to an Xbox's drive space, as it is going to be the first Microsoft Flight Sim to come to console. And while it's not there at launch, it is confirmed as coming. We just don't know exactly when yet. But yeah, job done. So what's your hard drive situation look like? How much free space do you have? How much do you need? Do you have enough room for a nice big fat stash of data cache for Flight Sim 2020? Might be time to think about an upgrade. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and thank you as always to the glorious patrons floating up above there. Thank you ever so much, guys. In fact, the, the patrons funded the purchase of this hard drive this month, so thank you guys for that. I needed it. <laughs>